Welcome back guys, Robot Gilliman and the Terran Crusade had just emerged from the webway on the surface of Luna and are being hunted by Magnus the Red and the Thousand Suns. What happens next? Let's dive right in. The Thousand Suns were spilling from the webway gate in increasing numbers. Scarab Occult and Rubrique driven forward by Chaos Sorcerers on their flying discs. Their advance was steady but unstoppable, pushing up the crater walls with their guns blazing. Recognizing that the crater itself offered the best chance of containing the foe, Gilliman spread his warriors, combat walkers and tanks around its lip and commanded them to pour fire down into the advancing Thousand Suns. Space Marines, Skitari, Dreadnoughts, Land Raiders, Vindicators, Dune Crawlers, Catafront Battle Servitors and more opened fire, using the lip of the crater for cover and making the most of the higher ground. The Loyalists sent volley after volley ripping down into the heretic Astartes. Striding automata were knocked back into the crater by devastating explosions. Glittering dust drifted from rents in ancient ornate armor, floating free in the low gravity and leaving once animate undead armor suits to crumble and collapse. Sergeants barked order through the vox, coordinating volleys of lace cannon blasts and demolisher shells to rain down upon the Roprique. Cypher and his shadowy companions rained fire down upon the Thousand Suns. Greyfax slammed silver stakes through one rope bouquet after another from her condemner bolter. Aldric Voldis tore traitors apart with the potent powers of his mind. Armored corpses piled in heaps at the bottom of the crater surrounding the webway gate with carrion remains. Then a fresh pulse of dark power surged through the webway gate its energies whirling faster and faster until they formed a flaming vortex. A wave of supernatural dread swept over the loyalist space marines as a huge horn-headed figure stepped through onto the surface of Luna. Spreading his wings wide, Magnus the Red looked up at Gellerman with a mocking smile. Drawing himself up to his full height, Magnus the Red raised his glaive and spoke dolorous words of power that rang out in defiance of all natural law. Purple flames leapt, forming shimmering shields and warding the thousand suns from harm. Suddenly the Rubrique and Scarab Occult could advance unharmed, striding upwards as their foes shots exploded among Magnus's psychic shields. The Thousand Suns suffered no such obstruction, and dozens of loyalists were sent tumbling back from the crater's lip, blood and shattered bones spraying. Seeing the sudden shift in the situation, Gilliman ordered his surviving warriors back. Moments later, the first ranks of Rubrique crested the lip of the crater and strode out with their gun muzzles flaring. Magnus rose from the crater with a word, the demon Primarch and made a trio of dread knights burning out their psychic wards and crushing their armor. With a gesture, he blocked an ultramarine's land raider from the ground and slammed it through the ranks of Skitari like a cannonball. Magnus brandished his staff and reality rent apart, a tide of crackling Zinchian demons boiling from the warp to join the battle. Recognizing that the demon Primarch would swiftly destroy his army if allowed free reign, Gilliman broke into a headlong charge giving vent to a booming war cry. The Primarch of the Ultramarines smashed a path through the Rubrique before him and launched himself into a heroic leave from the lip of the crater. Gilliman's sword, burning blade leaving a trail of flame behind him. Magnus saw his brother coming and began an incantation of pain, but before he could finish it, the Lord of Ultramar struck. Magnus managed to parry his brother's arcing blade with his glaive, but the battering ram impact of Gilliman's leap carried the Crimson King backward away from the fight. The two Primarchs tumbled across the lunar surface, dust billowing around them, and smashed into the rusted wreck of an Imperial frigate. Slabs of metal and corroded ironwork crashed down around them, burying the fighting brothers in an avalanche of wreckage. Meanwhile, the battle around the crater raged on, the last remnants of the Terran Crusade fighting furiously to survive. Gilliman fought his way to freedom. His armor was compromised, its air supply venting, and the cold of the void leaking in. Were it not for his godlike constitution and Cole's life-sustaining technology, Gilliman would likely have been dead. Instead, he raised his blade and kicked his way clear of the scattered wreckage. Magnus, 
he shouted through his Vox grill. Searching around him, the Primarch knew his dubiously gifted brother could hear his words even in the void of space. I know better than to think you dead. Face me. Deep laughter rolled around Gilliman. As he watched, Magnus's ethereal form rose from the wreckage and drifted down to loom over him. The demon Primarch solidified once more, huge and menacing. Very well, Rupert, laughed Magnus. Here I am in the flesh, and somehow there you are. Magnus cocked his head to one side and smirked. I don't remember you seeming so insignificant. Ten millennia have made you no less arrogant then, asked Gilliman, circling his towering foe. Inside his helm, a look of disgust twisted his patrician features as he regarded the monstrous form of the Crimson King. Certainly those years have done you no other kindness. Magnus sighed. How can you have such grand plans and yet such scant vision has always eluded me, the demon Primarch said, empiric energy stirring as they gathered around his leveled grave. This is what true power looks like. I see no power here, said Gilliman, shaking his head in dismay. I see corruption and enslavement to monsters that are worshipped as gods. On that tribute, Magnus laughed, sparing a glance at the loyalists fighting nearby. Perhaps we can finally agree. The Cyclopean sorcerer's smile turned into a sneer when he noticed his brother glance to the skies above. Hoping to keep my sons and I occupied until the remnants of the Imperium come to save you, I may not reach our father's throne room today, but I promise that you won't either. You will be dead long before help arrives. That alone will be worth all this trouble. With that, Magnus attacked. The giant moved far faster than even Gilliman could have believed, his glaive lashing out to split the Lord of Ultramar in two. Gilliman leapt backward pulling his midriff in as he did so. Magnus's weapon drew sparks from his armor as it whistled past, and Gilliman landed atop the crumbled brow of a nearby frigate. Before he could take stock, Magnus was hurling balls of blue psychic flame at him. Gilliman threw himself out of their path, sliding down the brow's rusted flank and dropping into a crouch at its feet. He broke into a charge, bursting from the drifting cloud of dust raised by his landing and weaving skillfully around his brother's sorcerous projectiles. The ammunition in hand of Dominion was spent, but it was still a very powerful weapon. Sidestepping a downward cut from Magnus's glaive, Gilliman slid inside his brother's guard and delivered a thunderous uppercut. The impact lifted Magnus from his feet and sent him tumbling upward into the inky blackness. Fiery blood drifted in strings from Magnus's shattered jaw, causing fungi to sprout from where it spattered on Luna's surface. The power of change embedded even in the demon Brimark's blood. Roiling psychic energy wrapped around Magnus, arresting his motion and righting him as he howled in anger. The demon Brimark stared hatefully down with his single eye, and Gilliman knew fresh sorrow as he realized how truly mad and lost his sibling had become. Arrogance, shouted Gilliman. It was always your undoing, brother. You thought this would be an easy fight? That the gifts of your so-called gods would render me impotent? Perhaps those you serve are not all you believe them to be. Magnus's rage vanished in an eye blink, and he laughed scornfully. You would like to believe that, wouldn't you? That the dutiful Rubut Gilliman was justified in his loyalty. That now the ramifications of our choices have become clear. You can look down on me, as you always did. With sudden violence, Magnus jabbed downward with his glaive. Flames exploded from its blade, engulfing Gilliman and the bedrock upon which he stood. Moon dust exploded upwards in crackling clouds. Fire danced across scrap iron. And Rubut cried out as agony racked his body. And then the void lit with fire. The Imperial Navy's Terran defense fleet hove into low orbit. Bright light flared and the golden giants of the Adeptus Custodes stepped from it with their guardian spears leveled. Moving with breathtaking speed and skill, the Custodians hacked their way into the heretic Astartes. Each fought like a hero born, their blades splitting ancient power armor like firewood. 
Two squads of helmed Sisters of Silence dropped from the gunships. They landed near Gilliman in fighting crouches. Magnus glowed, jabbing his glaive and sending tendrils of green and yellow psychic flame spiraling in their direction. The sorcery spattered and died before it reached them, undone by the Emberic dead zone around the warrior nulls. Seeing a strategic advantage at last, Gilliman leapt down from the mound of wreckage and landed amidst the Sisters of Silence. They would shield him from his brother's fell powers. Together, the Primarch and the Sisters charged toward Magnus with their blades at the ready. Magnus hefted his glaive and swooped forward to meet his enemies at close quarters. If he could not destroy them with the powers of the warp, he would hack and crush their mortal bodies until nothing remained but meat. Beneath the dark lunar sky, with terror hanging ancient and hollowed above them, the two Primarchs crashed together once again. Amidst a hail of bolts, Vale Walker sprang away as her kin cart wheeled into the enemy's midst from another direction. In such low gravity conditions, the Harlequins could achieve feats of agility and grace beyond even their normal blinding skill. Vale Walker sought he who wore the armor of fate. There he was, amidst the wrecks of crude human spacecraft, battling his monstrous brother alongside a band of warriors. Even from here, the mere presence of the psychic nulls made Selandri shudder. Vale Walker communed with her death jester, the Hollow Prince. The moment has arrived, she said. Our drama has played out, and the brother's enmity burns anew. Now the final curtain then, whispered the voice of the Hollow Prince, rich with wicked mirth, indignation, outrage, vendetta. It must be thus, agreed Vale Walker. I shall ready the gate, for truth this time. You deliver your lines and let matters play out. Without waiting for an answer, Vale Walker sprinted for the crater from which they had all emerged. Purple light spat from the corrupted webway gate. Magnus had done that, cursing the portal to permit his unnatural passage. Vale Walker smirked coldly behind her mask. He would pay for that hubris. Across the field of battle, she knew that the Hollow Prince would be communicating with Gilliman, explaining their plan to the Primarch. The Death Jester would be telling the Primarch that Magnus could be destroyed only by casting his body into the corrupted Webway Gate. If Vale Walker's visions were correct, Gilliman would believe him. Meanwhile, she had to prepare the Gateway, which was currently guarded by a pair of Chaos Sorcerers. Ghosting closer through the bodies with illusions flickering about her, Vale Walker drew her shuriken pistol. A gentle squeeze of its trigger, a flick of her wrist, and several more gentle depressions. First one sorcerer and then the other staggered as rounds struck them. Perfectly placed to puncture their gorget seals and open their jugular arteries. The two sorcerers crumbled, and Vale Walker began her incantations. The energies around the webway gate pulsed and shuddered, the runes on its sides glowing brighter as a keening vibration shook the dark pit. At that moment, battling demigods appeared upon the crater's edge. Gilliman and Magnus, both bleeding from the wounds they had dealt one another. Still flanked by a last handful of the Null Warriors, Magnus bisected another of the women with a brutal swing of his glaive, which lashed around to hack a chunk from Gilliman's breastplate. In return, the Lord of Ultramar drove Magnus back with hammer blows from the Emperor's blade, then slammed his shoulder into his brother's chest and sent the Crimson King crashing down the steep slope. The Shadow Seer started forward, fearing for the fate of the final act. Then with a roar of hate and rage, Gilliman struck. The Lord of Ultramar lunged at his brother. The burning blade drove in under the demon Primarch's guard and sank deep into his chest. Golden flames leapt, and Magnus howled in agony as they chewed at his flesh. He unleashed his powers in uncontrolled sorcerer's blast, its shockwave racing out across the crater and throwing Selandri from her feet. The burst of power hurled Gilliman onto his back, blade in hand and sent Magnus staggering free back through the pulsating webway gate. Silandri had one chance, a single moment in which to alter fate. With a final word, she shattered the rune storm that glowed hot in her palm and severed the webway gate to Luna forever. Power surged, Magnus roared his fury, 
and then was cut off from Luna. Gilliman watched his brother and his warriors banished to the depths of the labyrinth dimension. Though his plan to strike at the heart of the Imperium of Man in one fell swoop had failed, Magnus the Red always had another scheme in place. With his planet of the sorcerers, Soritarius restored to real space, the Crimson King knew that he would soon have another opportunity to lay low the Imperium that had betrayed him and destroyed all he had once loved. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more.